In this video, we'll be covering how to configure the IN100 to communicate with sensors that support the pulse count interface. Sensors that support this interface will send out the data represented by a train of pulses, and the number of pulses will correspond to the sensor reading. So let's learn about the pulse count interface and how we can configure the IN100 to interface with a supported sensor. So the pulse count interface utilizes a single wire or a single pin and sends out the data represented by pulses. So the number of pulses that are sent out by the sensor will correspond to the value of the sensor reading from that sensor. The IN100 supports both power management and 16-bit pulse counter simultaneously. So first we'll have to refer to the data sheet for the sensor to figure out a few parameters. This is an example of a pulse count output taken from the Nano Beacon Config Tool user manual. Referring to this figure, we can see that first, the maximum total time that the sensor spends during conversion, in addition to outputting the pulse, is one parameter that we need to figure out. The conversion and the pulse output times typically range from 30 to 60 milliseconds each. The second parameter that we need to figure out is the period of the pulse, and this is labeled TP in the figure. This is essentially the time between two pulses. So the value typically ranges from a few microseconds to tens of microseconds. And finally, we'll need to determine whether we want to count the rising or falling edges of the pulses. In this case, we'll use the falling edge count. Once we have all these parameters figured out, then we can configure the IN100 to interface with our sensor. In this video, we'll be using the Texas Instruments LMT-01 temperature sensor, which is seen here on the right. It is a high accuracy two pin temperature sensor with an easy to use pulse count current loop interface. And it's suitable for either onboard or offboard applications in automotive, industrial, and consumer markets. The pulse count interface is also designed to directly interface either with a GPIO or a comparator input on the microcontroller that we're using. The temperature is outputted as a transmission over a single wire and it's sent as a train of current pulses. So these currents will range from 34 microamps to 125 microamps and we'll be interfacing with the sensor via a GPIO pen since we do not have a comparator input on the IN100. So we'll be referring to the data sheet for the sensor to figure out a reference implementation circuit. Here's an example of an implementation circuit taken from the data sheet for the sensor. And as you can see, the additional components that are required in addition to the microcontroller that we have, which is the IN100 and the LMT01 sensor itself, is two resistors and an NPN transistor. Based on this, I've designed a circuit that looks like this to interface with the sensor. We have a, an NPN transistor, which is the 2N3904 from OnSemi. We have two resistors, both 10K ohms. We have the IN100 and the LMT01 sensor. So we'll be connecting the GPIO2 to this pin here on the transistor before the resistor. And after the resistor, it will connect to VBAT, which is VCC. The ground will go down here and connect to both of these connections. And then we have the SW0, which will be driving the voltage to the count the sensor and controlling the output and the power supply to the sensor. This is used so we can accurately control the timing of the measurement and be able to detect when we start the conversion and when we can read the pulses that are sent out by the sensor. And finally, the VN pin will be connected down here to this resistor and then going into this pin into the transistor. If we look up in the data sheet, we'll see we can find the switching characteristics in the timing diagram for this sensor. In this table, we can see that the conversion will take between 46 to 54 milliseconds. We'll be going with the maximum since we want to be safer in order to figure out the total time that is required for reading for the conversion plus the reading, the, the pulse being sent out by the sensor. So we have to add both the conversion time as well as the data transmission time. So we'll choose the maximum for both. So that gives us a total time of 104 milliseconds. The next parameter that we need to figure out is the pulse period. And based on it here in the 
as you can see in the figure, this is one over FP. And FP is the output current pulse frequency, which ranges from 82 to 94 kilohertz. We'll be going with the typical measurement, which is 88. So if we divide one by 88 kilohertz, we'll get approximately 11 microseconds. So those are the parameters we'll be using in the NanoBeacon config tool to configure the interface with the sensor. And here's a couple of images showing the connections on the IN100 development board, as well as the circuit that I built. In here, you'll see this is the transistor, and this is the temperature sensor. And you can refer back to the circuit that we showed, the circuit diagram to figure out the connections, but all these will be connected based on that circuit and then connected to the IN100 for both the SW0 and the VBAT and then the GPIO2 and the ground pin. Now let's go ahead and go and configure the NanoBeacon config tool, the IN100, to interface with the LMT01 sensor. Now that we've got the parameter values figured out from the data sheet, we can go ahead and configure the IN100 with the appropriate pulse count settings. So to do this, launch the NanoBeacon config tool first, and then navigate to the one wire sensor tab. In here, we'll have to make sure that this is enabled. We're going to be switching using the SW0 pin for power switching. This will ensure that the timing is correct when powering the sensor and going through the conversion period, as well as the reading of the sensor data, the pulse count. Next, we'll choose the GPIO. I'm using GPIO2 in my case. We can leave the pulse counting during sleep off to reduce the amount of power consumed because we don't need it while during, during the sleep period. And then we input in here the total time of pulse, which we calculated to be 104 milliseconds. The maximum gap between pulses is the period, and we calculated that to be 11 microseconds. And I'm going to choose the falling edge detection. Next, we can go ahead and configure the advertisement to include the data. In order to do that, we go to advertising set number one, and go into the settings and choose custom, go into settings. I've already had it uh, configured in here. So I set the device name to LMT01. You can choose whatever device name you want. Make sure you enable the manufacturer specific data next. You can change the ID depending on the company ID that you want to use. The 0505 is the in-play company ID that is granted by the Bluetooth SIG. You can go ahead and edit, and from the beginning, you will have this empty. Then go to the drop-down menu and choose one wire count. This is automatically setting it to be two bytes, which is the count, the maximum count is up to two bytes. And I'm gonna choose the big NDN format that'll make it easier to verify the count in the advertising packets. Now remember that the pulse count that is included in the advertising packets will be in hex, so we'll have to convert that to decimal and then plug it into the equation that we got from the data sheet to convert it to the temperature reading. So go ahead and make sure you append to data here. Now we can look at the advertising data and uh, we can see we have a complete local name which translates to LMT01. Then we have a manufacturer specific data with the company ID. And finally, the reading from the pulse count interface. And that includes the byte zero and byte one in big Endian format. And that's it in terms of configuration. Now we're ready to go ahead and test and capture the data on the mobile app side. Now let's go ahead and connect to the IN100 in the NanoBeacon config tool. So first, make sure you probe for the different connections that are available and select the USB serial one and hit connect. Once you do that, then we can run in RAM. So here on the mobile app, I'm running the NRF Connect on Android and I'm filtering for the LMT01 device name, which will make sure that we only see our device. And I can see the advertising here and we can see we are getting a value consistent of around 479, 478 hex. Let's go ahead and convert that. 
and that translates to 1144 decimal. Once we have that value, we can plug it into an, the equation that does the conversion. And from the data sheet, you can find the equation to do this. We can find the equation that we need to use. And here the temperature is equals to the pulse counter divided by 4096 times 256, and then subtracting 50 to get the degree Celsius. So once we plug in the reading, 1144, which was calculated from the 479 hex, we can get that the value is 21.5 Celsius. If we have placed my hand on the sensor, I can increase the temperature. As you can see, it's going up. Now it's up to around 4B5, 4D1, Let's go with 4D1. So if I convert 4D1, it's 1233. If I convert that, it's around 27 degrees Celsius. So that's it in terms of testing the pulse count interface with a sensor. And again, the sensor that we used in this video is the Texas Instruments LMT-01 high accuracy two pin sensor. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.